I guess I'm going to turn it over to the ornery little preacher woman here. I better get her stool so she can see over the podium. Respect anywhere. <laughs> no, no respect anywhere. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. I, you, Tom. I know you do. That's <laughs> Good job, Tob. Good morning. Well, I'm going to read the Philippians verses, but I'm reading them from the message. <clears throat> Every time you cross my mind, I break out in exclamations of thanks to God. Each exclamation is a trigger to prayer. I find myself praying for you with a glad heart. I'm so pleased that you have continued on in this with us, believing and proclaiming God's message from the day you heard it right up to the present. There has never been the slightest doubt in my mind that the God who started this great work in you would keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day Christ Jesus appears. So, do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering, no second guessing allowed. Go out into the world uncorrupted, a breath a fresh air in this squalid and polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God. Carry the light-giving message into the night so I'll have good cause to be proud of you on the day that Christ returns. You'll be living proof that I didn't go to all this work for nothing. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Well, the calendar's just turned to July, and you know what that means. Summer's half over. Summer's half over. Can you believe it? You know, the summer equinox was just a couple of weeks ago, and that means that the long daylight has turned and the days are going to get shorter and shorter and shorter. It's almost the 4th tomorrow. I hear you've already celebrated in Lorraine somewhat. Independence Day. Maybe some of you have plans for tomorrow. But in all our celebrations all over, whether we have parades or picnics or fireworks, you know, it's really easy to overlook. Freedom we have today. Our important heritage. Look at that picture. That's a signing of the Declaration of Independence. People who were there. It's good to rehearse why this holiday is so important to us. When those representatives of the Continental Congress first met in the year 1774, they had no idea. They had no idea that they had just come together to discuss the problems with the Great Britain. They had no idea what the outcome would be. But by the time the Declaration of Independence um, was crafted, there were 56 prominent men of the colonies who signed and pledged their lives and their fortunes and their sacred honor on the birth of a new nation. You know who they were? John Hancock, we all know that, don't we? You know what happened to them? You know by signing their names they committed an act of treason against the British Empire and birthed the United States of America. I wish you would read the Declaration of Independence again. But there's a little historical trivia. 
Five of those 56 were captured by the British and tortured. Nine of them fought with the army and died. Of those men, two lost their sons and others had their sons captured. At least a dozen had their homes pillaged and burned. They did lose all their fortunes as well. And by signing that paper, they drew a line in the sand that said, this is an irrevocable decision. There's no turning back. This is the path we've chosen. And sometimes today, I don't think they even teach it civics anymore. Uh, we forget the courage and sacrifice that people made for us just to be American. It, it was a terrific cost to those people because they believed. And they were all Christian men who acknowledged that openly and practiced their faith. A line in the sand. You know that phrase? And it's often used to do denote an earth-changing decision in the face of opposition. It comes from our Texas history. Of course, my husband was a Texan, so he, this was very close to his heart. Uh, and the siege of the Alamo. You know the story. There's William Barrett Travis and Davy Crockett and Jim Bowie and 200 other people were trapped in the mission at San Antonio, surrounded by the great army of Santa Ana, March the 5th, 1836. Knowing that the odds were against them, Travis, who was the colonel at that time, drew a land line in the sand. And he said, whoever wanted to escape in the dark before the battle could cross that line. And all the others who wanted to stand for Texas would remain. It was an irrevocable decision. Only one man crossed that line. All the others remained as heroes of the cause. And their names are honored forever in the shout, remember the Alamo, remember. I want to tell you, Paul, the writer of our scripture this morning, faced his own line in the sand. He did. Maybe you remember the story from the book of Acts. He was on his road to Damascus. He was a fire-eating Pharisee who was intent upon stamping out the Christian sect. He had the authority. He had the papers. He had the clout when he met Jesus on that road. And in essence, Jesus says, are you ready to quit fighting me, Saul? And believe? And from that moment on, Paul the apostle was born again and went on to become the greatest evangelist and church starter in the history of the faith. He never looked back. And in fact, he states later in this very letter that all his accolades as Saul the Pharisee, I gave it all up, he said, as inferior stuff so that I could know Christ personally. There comes a time in every person's life when Jesus stands before them. And he draws a line in the sand spiritually. Do you believe in me or not? Is Jesus Christ your Savior? Will you let him be Lord of your life? And every single person's response to that irrevocable decision is a matter of life and death. And like those courageous men in the First Continental Congress who offered everything they had to the cause, Jesus asked for everything we are to the kingdom to pledge our lives and our futures and our sacred honor to him who gave up everything 
for us. Our Independence Day people began on a hill called Golgotha over 2,000 years ago in Palestine. And the cross symbolizes the freedom for all of us who claim Jesus as ours, our Savior and our Lord. And that has been true for all believers since the very first Easter morning. Now, maybe you personally cannot name a time or date that you beheld your line in the sand. Perhaps it was a gradual belief process, but it really doesn't matter because each of us choose according to Christ's working in our lives. But it's a vital fact that you did choose. You see, I never take it for granted that just because people have sat in the pews all their lives that they know Jesus Christ as their personal Savior and Lord. But it's what happens after that decision that's the most important. Our diligence is staying the course. A conscious decision is not the end of our journey. It's just, just like the Declaration of Independence. That was just a start, the beginning of a struggle for the ultimate goal. And I want to tell you that first century church that Paul was writing to their lives was every bit as dangerous as the time of our first American patriots. So the words to the early church that Paul wrote to Philippi are still relevant today for us, Lorraine. Listen again. You have continued on in this with us up to the present time. The God who started this great work in you will keep at it and bring it to a flourishing finish on the very day that Jesus Christ appears. God doesn't leave us. God will keep at it, at us, to bring us to perfection or where he wants us to be. He, his will will be done. He's crafting you every day. Now, you came to the place where this congregation and the United Methodist Church could no longer exist in unity. It was your line in the sand. And a decision to forge another path and to be free to make fresh decisions. And God, who began this great work right here in Lorraine, will keep at it. Father God is with you. Jesus, Savior, is present the Holy Spirit is almost tangible. And it doesn't matter that you cannot quite see the future plainly yet. God will bring you to a flourishing finish. Can you grasp that? You're riding on the wave of a powerful Holy Spirit. And facing the future our Jesus means for you. And every resource you want or need is available to you out of this great storehouse of the Father. He owns the cattle on a thousand hills. He set the stars in the skies. He created everything in this beautiful earth. God has exactly what you need. You know, you might think me silly, but I think you folks are just as heroic as those first Continental Congress visionaries and the Texicans at the Alamo because you made history with your decision. But the crux of the matter is that now that you have crossed the line, so to speak, it's all new territory. But it isn't really. For this book, right here, this book is full of hundreds of people who have chosen God's way and explored new beginnings 
and unexplored roads of God's design. We aren't the first. Abraham packed up and left his home and his country following he had no idea where. Joshua stood at the Jordan River, crossing into the promised land full of enemies. And he said, as for me and my house, we'll serve the Lord. Moses went back to Egypt to face his past and the might of Pharaoh. Gideon, the farmer, uh, needed to raise an army. Ruth followed an old woman into a foreign land. We're but part of a great cloud of witnesses to the power of Almighty God, and we're guaranteed to succeed. Will somebody say amen? Guaranteed. But how to succeed in the next chapter of your story? All right, listen. How to succeed is to but keep on living for Jesus. Keep on living for Jesus, following his word and deeds. Sounds simple, doesn't it? Just follow Jesus. Paul outlines it for the church, and he says, do everything readily and cheerfully. No bickering. No second guessing. Go out into the world uncorrupted. A breath of fresh air in the squalid in polluted society. Provide people with a glimpse of good living and of the living God. Carry the light-giving message into the night. You know, when I was growing up, as kids do, I would always go to my mama to listen to my troubles. You know how they were. Someone was bullying me. Someone was gossiping about me. Somebody was cheating at school. Somebody was mean. And when all of us children were faced with some kind of problem or circumstances that were against us, she'd offer this advice. Always take the high road, dear. Always take the high road. And that meant that no matter how ugly other people were, or how unfair the situation we found ourselves in, it was up to us to do the right thing. Not to retaliate, not to wage war or respond with, to anger with anger, harsh words with harsh words, but to behave with the best behavior we do how. Did we always like that advice? Of course not. Of course not but it prepared us to be people of character and integrity, to not only advertise as Christian, but to walk the walk, to walk the walk. That's the advice that Paul's giving to the church in Philippi. Provide people with a glimpse of the good life, good living. Carry the light-giving message to the night. And isn't that good advice? Because, friends, every day, you and I are confronted with a line in the sand. There's decisions to be made. There's temptations to face. There's choices. There's the words we say or the actions we do or don't do. So this 4th of July, I want you to be proud of our forefathers and mothers who made unpopular and life-threatening choices in order to speak truth and build a free and prosperous future for us, for us. And also this Sabbath day, to be rightly proud of our Heavenly Father for the greatest Independence Day of them all. For the Christian saints, men and women who went before us to build the kingdom of God. So listen to the words of the scripture this morning and be encouraged, church. God, who started this great work in you, 
We'll keep at it. We'll keep at it. His is the battle, and he knows where we're headed. And go out into this world, this ugly, nasty, pagan world that we live in at the moment, a breath of fresh air in a squalid and polluted society. Never forget that you and I are the salt and the light and the hope and the peace for our homes and our communities and our whole nation. We always need to take the high road, folks, the royal road, the way, believing and sharing our Jesus. Amen. And now let's prepare ourselves for the great Thanksgiving. Would someone like to help me? Terry said he would. Great. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. And so with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Glory to God, Almighty, earth glory, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord, Hosanna in the highest. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. And on the night at which he gave himself up for us, he took bread and gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take and eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he just took the cup and gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ is done. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here and on these gifts, the bread and wine, and make them be for us the body and blood of Christ. 
that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ and one with each other and one in ministry to all the world until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. The body of our precious Lord, broken for you. The blood of our sweet Jesus poured out for you. Come to the table.
serving him. May the great and awesome blessings of our God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, rest upon you this day and every single day of your entire life. Amen. <laughs>